Hey guys, welcome to the Art of Craftsmanship. My name is Dustin. On this uh, YouTube channel, we will be working on metal projects. We'll be working on wood projects. We'll be doing some stuff around the house. Um, I'll be doing some DIY stuff, some stuff just to introduce you into some new things and uh, teach you some stuff that I know and learn some stuff from you. So today we'll be making a file knife. I know there's lots of file knife videos on YouTube, but uh, I really like making them and it should be an interesting project. Um, what we're going to do is we'll start out building up a fire uh, by using files. You have to anneal them before you start moving, before you start working on them. And the annealing process is heating them up to non-magnetic and then cooling them down slowly. What that does is it takes the iron and the carbon that's inside of steel, and when they're when it's they're all moving around, when you heat it up to non-magnetic, everything's kind of floating around inside. And when you anneal it and then cool it down slowly, everything has time to move and spread apart. And then all those iron and those carbon molecules spread apart and makes the metal soft. Uh, adversely to that, when you dunk them in water, when you heat up your metal to non-magnetic and you're hardening, you dunk it in water, you dunk it in oil, and that does, they're all floating around and then they lock together. And that's what makes your steel really hard. And so we'll pull out a couple old rusty files that I have for making knives. And these are kind of nice thick ones, which will be fun. So I'm going to put in all three files right down the middle. Ooh, that is nice and hot. And make sure they're not touching. So we're going to build it back up put some wood on top, get everything cooking, and keep the fire burning nice and long, a good hour, maybe more, and then, uh, and then we'll just let it cool down on its own. Fire will burn all the way down, and then the files will cool down on their own, and that'll anneal them. So cooling down slowly lets all the molecules, again, move apart. Wind's doing the work for us. So you can see here, this is one of the things you have to be careful with the files. You can see that it has warped in the fire, but that's okay, they're soft now. So we'll straighten them up, we'll work on them, and then we'll, we'll deal with that uh, warping later. All right, guys, we have our three files out of the fire. They're a little dirty, so we're gonna clean them off. Look at what we have and decide which one we wanna use for the knife today. All right, let's, let's bang on this a little bit. Let's see if we can get it to straighten up. there. And that was just cold hammering. I wasn't heating it up. I wasn't doing anything other than just working it cold after it came out of the, of the fire. All right. Now we're ready to work on our design. Uh, the benefits for 
the Scandinavian grind over the Sabre grind is that you have a, it's a little bit of a steeper angle, which is good for woodworking and cutting. It's a stronger edge because it's the steeper angle as well. Uh, this one is you know, good for versatile as a cooking knife, camping knife. It's a little bit more versatile, but the edge is not gonna be as strong because it's gonna be come to a finer taper. Uh, same thing with this one. This one's just a little bit uh, longer and a little bit longer handle, more of a standard kind of all around backpacking, bushcrafting knife. And I think I'm gonna make the bushcrafting knife, again, like I said, I had the one that, uh, the other one I have is a quarter inch blade. This one's a, an eighth inch blade. It's gonna be a little bit lighter, a little bit easier to hold. Um, just another fun knife to make. Uh, what we may do is, after this video is finished, the video is finished, if you like one of the other designs, you put comments below. Let me know which one you guys like, and I might take the consensus and make another knife in that style. The sparks were very bushy, spreading all over the place. That's a good sign of high carbon steel. A low carbon or mild steel, you get long, straight sparks. Uh, so the higher the carbon, they kind of, the sparks fly out and they'll bush out, so you get a lot of flare out from the end. I will work on the blade next uh, to make sure this is all to the final shape because after I shape the blade now, then I'll start the bevel and we're gonna need the final shape to be exactly where we want it before we start the bevel. I'm gonna work on now on my bench top sander, just work on bringing this edge down and finesse the blade up. You can see where my marks, my original marks are, so I'll kind of get down to them but I'm only gonna be paying attention to them so much. I really want just the, the whole blade to look really nice and clean. Right now it's a little clunky looking, kind of straight out and just comes to, comes to a taper. I do want it to be a drop point. Uh, I think that's one of the, the better uh, designs, better designs ever, but specifically for what I want this knife to be for, which is kind of a general bushcrafting, camping, backpacking use. So having this uh, point come down to a drop point gives a stronger point, also gives you a, a spot where you can bore to do, you know, boring to make uh, fire starting sticks, things like that, and all sorts of fun stuff. And I'm just using a marking gauge set right about the center. I'll just run this along the edge.
All right, so I brought it close to the center line on the grinder, so I'm gonna switch over to the vise and start using the file and do some hand work on it, try to clean it up and make it real pretty. I'm just watching my tool marks as I go, trying to keep them even along the middle of the bevel right now. And as this bevel gets flatter, it'll, the tool marks will spread out more evenly. See, I'm picking up some metal inside my file. So you want to make sure you have around a, a wire brush. You can use this, clean that material out so you have the teeth on the file nice and clean. Flip it over and work on the other side. When we start using the finer and finer sandpaper, you can start to see where we may have to backtrack some to get rid of some of these bigger tool marks that were left behind from the file. I do what I can to try to file them off with the sandpaper, but if we can't, we'll have to go back and use the more aggressive or use a little bit more aggressive sandpaper and try to get those marks out. I finished putting the bevels on the blade, the initial bevels. I used a coarse and then a double-sided coarse and fine file to shape the bevels. I used 220 grit sandpaper and 500 grit sandpaper um, with a wooden block to take off most of the tool marks. So they're all gone now. That'll make it a lot easier to work with once I've done the heat treating. I don't have to worry about getting tool marks out of the blade. Uh, the next step is to start the heat treating process. So I have this <clears throat> little forge that I built out of a metal trash can, um, half plaster and half sand mixed her together. And I have a port in here where the fire goes and it creates a little circular forge and it works really well. I'm gonna do a normalizing process now. So I'm gonna get the blade in. I'm gonna let it heat up to the non-magnetic, which is about 1,500 degrees. And then I'm gonna pull it out and let it air cool for a little bit. Put it back in, do it again. Pull it back out, let it air cool. And then the third time I'm gonna put it in and bring it back up to 1,500 degrees. I'll test it with a magnet, which I have here, so I know that it'll be non-magnetic, and then we'll dunk it in oil.
All right, so I can feel it's a little bit magnetic right at the end of the blade. I want to make sure it's non-magnetic all the way through the blade before I pull it out of the hot, out of the forge, or before I dunk it, before I start the normalizing process, which I'll pull it out and let it air cool for maybe five minutes, put it back in until it's magnet, non-magnetic again. I'll pull it out again, let it air cool about five more minutes, and then I'll do it a third time. A third time, I'll quench it. I'm gonna pull it out, flip it over, I'm gonna quench it edge first, try to get the whole edge to go in at the same time. That'll also help it from warping from side to side. Check it against the blade, check it against the metal. It's just sliding across, just like glass. So we know it's been heat treated properly. So I got my oven preheated to 400. I'll put the knife inside. Nice thing I've been using canola oil, so this won't stick up the kitchen. I just want to be careful. If you're using motor oil, it's probably not a good idea to do your tempering in a regular oven. So set it for two hours. Let that go for two hours on 200. Then I'll pull it out, let it air cool, and I'll put it in this for a second quenching. So I'll put it in for 200, uh, in for 400 degrees for another two hours. And that will bring the temperature, bring the temperature up on the blade, but not so high that it's gonna mess up with the heat treating, but it will bring the hardness down. Um, and we want the hardness to come down some because right now it's the blade is super hard and it's brittle hard. So if you hit it on something, it would snap, it would just snap off. So this will bring it down. It'll make it soft enough that it will be um, durable for bending, but uh, hard enough that it'll keep an edge. Do my best to keep everything flat while I'm bringing this edge down. It'll make it a lot easier to sharpen later if this edge is flat. Looking good. So I put what's called a, a little bit of a convex grind. So instead of it being a Scandinavian grind, a perfectly flat down to the edge, it has a little bit of a convex. So it kind of comes to the point. I've been working on getting this edge down. I'm pretty close for about an hour, which is 
hard, but it just proves that the edge has been tempered really well. It's a really nice hard edge, so it should keep that grind, keep that sharpness for a long time. All right, I think we're good. So we're gonna move on to the handle. So my three spots and they're all each an inch and a half away from each other. One good strike. Do one more. Whoa. Got it. All right, let's try again. I got that. We've come to a standstill in the knife making. Uh, I've hardened the blade far enough down here that I'm, as you guys saw, I'm having trouble drilling through into this spot. I tried a few other spots to see if I could get it, but it's not working. So uh, it's too hard to, to drill through. Instead of going back and re annealing the blade, reheat treating it, and retempering it, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use these two holes that I have, use the brass rod um, to go through those pieces glue the handle on, glue the spacers, everything in, drill some more holes in the handle. Um, and then once we get the wood and everything glued up, then we'll just drill into the wood on both sides and put the brass in from the outside. So it'll look like it has three brass rods going through to hold it through, even though it only have two. I'm not worried about it. It'll be plenty strong with the two that are in it. Um, the third will just be an aesthetic, uh, just something to please the eye and I'm not selling the blade, so I'm not worried about you know cheating somebody out of what they think is three brass rods through when it's only two, so. Just a little trick, just something to make it work at this point. Should be fine. I don't really want to go through, but it's all right, this will work to give it some, some spots to grip. Dark. See how that looks. I'm just putting this one on its side because we can see that it'll be lighter than the cut side. That looks okay. The contrast of the bright red might be where we're going. That looks pretty nice. I think that's going to be cool. So we're ready now to epoxy everything together and I dry fitted everything onto the handle. I took it all apart in order the way I did it. 
So we have the handle, the, the liners on each side, they're all laying down the same way. The two pins we're gonna put through, as well as the two pins that we're gonna use as the kind of faux pin on the end because we weren't able to drill all the way through the, uh, the hardened part of the, of the blade. So we're gonna use a two-part epoxy by Loctite. It's a five-minute epoxy. Um, I always try to take off my caps and leave them the way that I took them off and keep my hands in left to right so that way I know which caps to put back on. The last thing you wanna do is put the wrong cap back on because that's gonna activate it and lock your epoxies together. You wanna squeeze out the same, the right amount. So you have two piles that are the same amount. Kind of watch as you go. Two part epoxy, you just put your two parts together and you mix them. They have to be mixed nice and thoroughly. The epoxy and an activator work together. Wood. I cleaned everything with mineral spirits before doing the glue. You want to make sure all your surfaces are clean as possible. That way, your glue adheres to the surfaces as good as possible. I'll just set that there for now and then do some more epoxy on this side of the liner. All right. Halfway there, I'm gonna put the pins through. There we go, so now we're starting to come out the other side. This epoxy is a five minute epoxy, so it's gonna set up pretty quick and be usable quick, but it won't really be completely set for about an hour or so. And then at that time, we'll uh, come back. I don't, know, I don't think I'm gonna get that. We'll come back about an hour and then we'll take everything off and start working on the handle. All right, we've let the glue dry completely uh, overnight. And so now we're going to take part, take the clamps and do the reveal. Take a, all the tape off the handle. All right, that's good enough for now. So <clears throat> this is where we'll look to make sure that we have a good seal all the way around, especially up in the front. And we have glue coming out all the way around, so I can sand all that off.
gotten enough material removed from the handle. I don't want to take too much off at this point now. So I'll take my time and slowly sand it to the shape I want. up with 80 grit so I got the shape of the knife down to what I want it a few little spots I'll keep working on but I'm gonna move on to 220 and then 500 and that'll be plenty for the handle We have gotten to the point now where it's just finishing up the blade, finish up the actual uh, the, the polish of the blade and making sure that my, my bevels are straight all the way as well where I'm polishing. See all the oil just brings the grain out of the wood. Just gorgeous, gorgeous curly maple with red liners. Last step of the process is to do my signature file work on the back of the spine here. I do a series of four hourglasses in a row. We've finished up the knife, the handle's on, beautiful curly maple scales and the red liners turned out really nice. So 
we're going to make a sheath for this, but that'll be on the next video. Uh, even now, I haven't done the final sharpening yet, but even now with just the bevels ground and sanded, it's pretty sharp. You can see it cuts pretty well. It definitely can use some more sharpening, but like I said, I haven't done that yet. So I hope you guys enjoyed our first video and we'll see you on the next one.